Hello, this is CJ Hoyle, and welcome to day three in my tour of the Trent Severn Waterway. As you can see, I camped here at Fenland Falls last night, and today I'll be paddling further downstream, heading towards Sturgeon Lake, and this here is the river where I'll be heading towards to get there. I woke up this morning at around 6 a.m., and I'm just working on getting everything packed up. All right, so it's now 7 a.m., and I have the canoe fully loaded, and I'm ready to begin my journey for day three. So my plan for today is to paddle in the south direction from here in Fenland Falls to the community of Lindsay. I'll begin the day paddling through the Fenland River as it opens up into Sturgeon Lake. The line on the map shows the approximate path that's recommended for boats, but I'm planning on hugging the western shore of the lake as I head south. Eventually the lake narrows and becomes the Scugog River, which will lead me to the Lindsay Lock Station where I'm planning on camping tonight. All right, so I'm on the water and just saying goodbye to Fenland Falls, which is a really nice little town. And I really enjoyed my stay there and I'd recommend visiting if you're in the area. Well, that's a very interesting looking house. I wonder if they have any trouble finding someone to redo their roof for them. Over here, it looks like this is the Fenland River's one-stop shop for Mack trucks, Audi, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and the beer store. Or maybe this person just likes collecting signs. It's so nice and quiet and peaceful in the river this morning. This is called the Fenland River. I'm not the only one out piling this morning. There's a guy fishing over there. And somebody stand up paddle boarding over there. All right, so the river is now opened up and I've entered into Sturgeon Lake. There's a float plane parked over there. So while it had been pretty calm back in the river, there's definitely some wind out here in the lake. So similar to yesterday, I've got sort of a crosswind that's pushing me up against the shoreline here that I'm following. I'm just taking a short little break here next to the reeds. So having traveled about seven kilometers so far, it's about uh, 10 minutes till nine o'clock. And I decided I'd take a break here at this dock beside one of these cottages to have a break and have my breakfast, my regular overnight oats breakfast. So Sturgeon Lake is shaped like a V, and over there, that's the middle of the V, and I'm continuing my way down this side of the V into Lindsay, but tomorrow I'll be coming back along that shoreline over there and heading up to the other arm of the lake to continue my trip. So as you'll notice from the amount that the canoe is rocking here, the wind has been quite strong as I've been paddling. It's kind of been coming um, on a diagonal from the shoreline here that I've been following, which has made it significantly more work than where I started in the Fenland River, but it's not too bad. It's still pretty manageable. Anyways, finished my breakfast and now I'll keep going. So there's another look at where the V is in Sturgeon Lake. So I'm wrapping around to this side and I just noticed this really interesting dock that this cottage here has. Seems like all the different arms of it are retractable for the, presumably for all the heavy waves that come into this side of the lake. You can see here that Sturgeon Lakers love their Canadian flags and the wind is strongly coming from the southeast. There's a loon. Two of them actually. Oh, one of them's under the water now. Now they're both under the water. The loon is the bird that appears on the Canadian one dollar coin. So I've just reached this point here where there's a little bit of an island and I'm going to enjoy taking a break and the calmness between the island and the mainland. It's like a completely different lake in here with the shelter from this island. So I continued to follow the shoreline and then it turned into this marsh. So I have to go around this marsh to continue my way towards Lindsay. So since that marsh juts out pretty far into the lake, I've decided to start making my way across to the other side of the lake. So I've nearly made it all the way across the lake to the other side. You can see that there's a lot of green grass over there. I think that's probably farmland, not too far beyond the cottages that are right there on the lake. And the reason that I crossed here is because I had to cross anyways because of that marsh. And I figured I might as well get over here where the actual proper boating lane is for the canal. 
um, because really I just found that other shoreline just so unpredictable. Uh, it didn't match what my map showed either, so it was just sort of zigzagging back and forth and you didn't really know, you know, you couldn't really make a, a smart decision about choosing a line to, to follow. Um, so I figure I'll just get into the shipping lane over there and uh, that'll lead me right to where I need to go. And I can also hug the, the uh, eastern shore there and it should be a lot um, calmer than what I was seeing before because the wind is coming from, you know, the wind's coming over from there on that side there. So the shore over there should be pretty, uh, pretty calm, you know, if I'm a couple, you know, 10 meters away from shore, it should be really nice and calm and I can just follow that the rest of the way into Lindsay. So I'm all the way across the lake now and as I had hoped, it's nice and calm over here. When I was choosing my route for today, I had considered, given the direction of the wind, that I could have followed the eastern shore of the lake instead of the western shore of the lake because that would be the sheltered side and I'd be seeing, you know, the sort of sheltered shoreline that I'm seeing right here now. But the reason I didn't was because because of the shape of Sturgeon Lake, there's that V, and I would have needed to cross the entire lake in that middle part there, and I figured that would be really windy there. But again, I'm still kind of new to this, so I don't know whether I made the right decision or not, um, but I do know that I've made it this far in one piece at least. There are several of these old dilapidated old shacks along the shipping channel here. Kind of an interesting place to build a building, because it's just pretty much a marsh on one side and water on the other side. So I'm sure it would be only boat access and it had to be built on top of something that floats. So as I continue my way heading south, I can see that Sturgeon Lake is narrowing and of course it narrows down and becomes the Scugog River. Since I crossed over here to the east side of the lake, all this territory that I'm covering, I'll need to cover again tomorrow in the reverse direction. So there's a slight problem with my plan of following the east shore, and that is that it's all marshland. So either you're, you know, way over there, you know, getting the shelter from the wind um, and fighting through, you know, long, tall grass and stuff, or you're, you know, kind of a ways out, and then you're still getting the full effect from the wind that, you know, I would have had on the other side. So I guess the grass is always greener. I've been paddling through this really interesting plant. It looks kind of like moss, and you might think that, you know, right below that moss that you can see there, there's, you know, soil, and it's like a, a mound, but if I take my paddle and I stick it down there, you'll see that it goes right in, and there's, the ground is actually down there, but it grows very long and it grows very thick. So the time is now nearly 1 p.m., and I've traveled about 18.6 kilometers so far, and I'm feeling pretty hungry, and haven't really found a good place to stop, so I think I'll just eat my lunch from sitting inside the canoe here. And my lunch today is peanut butter sandwiches. After lunch a bit further down the river, I can see a giant bird's nest which has an osprey perched on top. I've seen osprey before on my bike trips, but I'm more accustomed to seeing their giant nests built at the top of much taller poles and not directly above the water like this. Well, I've been paddling right into the wind for a while now, but the end is in sight, or at least somewhat. You can see the square and the triangle, those direct me into the harbor. After lots and lots of marshland and forest, I can now see some houses from the community of Lindsay coming into view. I have a feeling I should be able to see a little bit more once I get past this tree here. Well, that's definitely looking more like a town. The river is really calm compared to the lake that I was in. There's almost no wind and no waves. Here's the first bridge I'm going under today. There's the lock that I've been heading for today. Now I won't be going in the lock because tomorrow I'm gonna to be turning around and going back the same way that I came, but that lock would take you up to continue on the Scugog River to be able to get all the way to Lake Scugog and you can get to destinations such as Port Perry from there. Looks very similar to the locks that I was riding through on day one. Straight ahead you can see the remnants of an old mill this one looks like about one and a half, maybe two meters. So even though I hadn't really planned on it, I actually am gonna take the lock to get to the top side of the canal. And that's because just where the camping area is, it makes more sense. Up we go. 
So the reason why I took the lock up to the top is because the area where I'm going to be camping is over there. So I brought the canoe up to here so I can unload everything and it's less distance to carry to get it up there. Tomorrow morning when I leave, the lock won't be open because they don't open until 9. So I'll have to find another way to get out of here. So I'm not the only person taking the lock today. All right, so I've got the canoe out of the water now and I've locked it to that tree. And my campsite for tonight is right here. Not a whole lot of options. I just tried to find a nice flat spot that was, you know, not too much in people's way. So I've had a slightly different experience every night with getting my camping permit. On the first night I arrived and I said, oh, I want to camp here. And he just said, oh yeah, just go over there. And I said, oh, do I, you know, can I pay for a permit? And he said, oh no, that's okay, go ahead. Just, he didn't really care. Um, last night, they, they, you know, I just said I wanted to camp and they said, okay, that'll be $5. It's a very inexpensive permit regardless. Um, and then tonight I arrive, you know, paddle all the way down this long lake and I get there and I said, I'd like to camp here tonight. And the guy says, oh yeah, we're not doing camping this year. And I was just like, what? And he said, yeah, 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 we're not, uh, none of the log stations have camping. And I was able to say, okay, well, I know that part's not true because I've camped, you know, two nights in a row at log stations. Um, so I, you know, I told him that and he said, oh, okay, let me go and check. Um, the thing is that some log stations don't allow camping, but I knew for sure based on the website, you know, I, I made plans to not only to stay at places that did say that they had camping. Um, so sure enough, you know, he checked on the website and he's like, oh, okay, I guess you can camp here. Um, but <laughs> really not what I wanted to hear after spending hours and hours paddling down a long lake to reach a destination, which really isn't even, you know, en route to where I'm going. I mean, I could have just kept on going. Uh, when I got to that V in the lake today, I could have just turned left and, uh, you know, continued on to Bob Cajun where I'm going tomorrow. I didn't really need to come to Lindsay and I certainly wouldn't have if uh, there wasn't camping available. Now I was warned by the log staff member that it gets pretty, as she said, sketchy here at night uh, because there's lots of people fishing here. Uh, but having, you know, have that experience last night, um, it didn't really bother me that much. I mean, as I said, there wasn't a whole lot of privacy that I had, but um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling in danger or feeling like, you know, my stuff was not safe or secure. Um, of course, I got the canoe locked up and, you know, when I leave the tent to go and explore the town, I bring all my valuables with me. So um, I'm not really worried about that aspect. So as far as I know, there isn't a bike share in Lindsay, so I guess I'll be exploring by foot tonight. So that's where the lock is and you can see the green canoe over there. My tent is kind of hidden behind a tree. And this is that bridge that I came under right before I got to the lock. And I paddled in from the river over there and it seems like downtown Lindsay is over this way. So this over here is Kent Street and it looks like it's the old historic downtown street of Lindsay. Looks like a nice historic street. Something that characterizes a lot of small towns in Ontario is diagonal parking like this along the main street. As I've been walking I've been scoping out the dinner options even though I'm not quite ready for dinner quite yet and there's lots of choices, which makes it difficult to decide. Before dinner, I'm gonna visit the grocery store to stock up on a few food items. Got a mask, check. So we got some more apples, some orange juice, and some more granola bars. So for dinner, I decided to get some takeout from Pita Pit, which I'll enjoy back at the campsite. So for dinner, I got this large salad, which has gyro meat on it. And I also got a blueberry smoothie, of which I already drank most of on my walk back here. And I'm going to enjoy my dinner with this nice view overlooking the canal. So before I go to bed, I'm going to mix up my overnight oats for tomorrow. So I keep the individual servings in their own Ziploc bags. I just dump them into there. And then I add the appropriate amount of water so that everything's just barely submerged. Pretty good amount there. And I just leave it like this and tomorrow morning it'll turn into a delicious oatmeal porridge type of thing that I can eat. If you'd like to know more about this overnight oats recipe, I have a separate video on this topic. All right, so it's just about bedtime now and I just wanted to wrap up my day three video. So another enjoyable day of paddling. Um, my total distance today was 23.4 which is slightly less than when I paddled yesterday, um, but I found today more exhausting uh, because that wind just really, you know, the whole day, I mean, I was 
pretty much the whole day I was in that big lake and uh, the wind was not particularly favorable which made it you know quite exhausting but uh, still a good experience and still looking forward to um, continuing tomorrow as I mentioned earlier tomorrow I'm going to be heading back up into Sturgeon Lake but this time I'm going to be following the eastern shore as it curves around uh, in the east direction and eventually getting to Bob Cajun um, so it'll be nice to see another little town um, I've enjoyed Lindsay um, you know, all these places I've been seeing, Fenland Falls, Lindsay, uh, Kirkfield, these are all places I've never been to before. Um, so it's really nice getting to see these, you know, small little communities for the very first time and uh, being able to do it uh, in a different, you know, different mode of transportation than what I've um, typically done for, for traveling in the past. But anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed joining me for day number three. Uh, if you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.